Hi, uh, I'm Priyanka. I've been working with Adobe for the past four years. I've worked on Fireworks, which is a web graphics design tool. And in the past one year, uh, we have been working on a web tool uh, that would generate graphics for the web. And it would export to SVG as well. So today what I'll do is I'll share all the cool things that I, I personally think are cool about SVG. So uh, before we proceed, how many of you have heard of uh, SVG? How many of you have used SVG? Ah, oh, that's awesome. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go over what SVG is and why we should use SVG and how you can use SVG in HTML and all the SVG elements and its properties and how you can animate and interact with SVG. So SVG, it is graphics that scales well across multiple screens uh, without any loss of fidelity. Uh, what I mean by this is here I have two versions. One is a PNG version, which is a bitmap, and I have a SVG. Uh, when I scale it, as you can see, the image gets distorted. But with SVG, there is no loss of fidelity and it works well across uh, multiple screens. Coming to HTML, SVG, and CSS, SVG has been around for a while. But what has changed in the recent past is that there is support for inline SVG now. And why is inline SVG important? It's because you can add SVG directly to your DOM and you can interact with it as you do with any other DOM elements. So that is where you can make your web pages richer by making use of the goodness of HTML, CSS, and SVG. So coming to the properties of SVG, SVG is uh, stylable. You can use CSS or uh, SVG styles. It's uh, responsive. It works across uh, multiple devices, multiple screens, uh, platforms, and it works well with media queries as well. Uh, it's interactive. You can add event listeners to it and work with it as you would with any other DOM elements. It's uh, animatable. Uh, you can add CSS or SVG animations to it. Here you can see that the gradient is being animated and it is uh, scriptable as well. Uh, what I mean by this is you can generate your SVG and add it to your DOM dynamically. Uh, frameworks like Raphael or uh, Snap makes use of the scripting capability of SVG and it generates really good graphics that you can use directly within your uh, HTML. So in ways to include SVG in your HTML. With XHTML, you could use it as an image. You could use it as an object with the object or the embed tag. Uh, you could use it as a document with the iframe. And with HTML5, you can use it directly within your uh, document. Uh, we'll be speaking more about inline SVG in this uh, session. So let's take a minute to look at all the SVG elements that are there. Uh, you can use the SVG tag like uh, this in your body or div. And it provides basic shapes like rectangle, ellipse, circle that you would expect any graphical language to have. Uh, it has SVG text as well, which we'll uh, look at in a while. And it has other shapes like line, polygon, polylines. And it also has path with which uh, you can draw your shapes and busier curves. Uh, for styling, we have SVG gradients. And you can use SVG patterns. Uh, you can use clip paths where you can define your shape and embed your bitmap within the shape. Uh, there are SVG filters like blur, uh, grayscale, and you, it works well with CSS styles. And there are transformation properties like translation or uh, rotation. Coming to SVG text, a lot of things are being worked on to make the text rendering better on the browser. Uh, with the new CSS specifications, we have uh, CSS regions and uh, CSS shapes. If you're not aware of it, uh, what CSS regions does 
is you can put your uh, text within your container and you can make the text flow from one container to the other and there are css shapes where you can embed your text uh, within a particular uh, shape but this is not yet supported on all the browsers and even with that uh, css can't do something uh, like this where i have the text on my path and it's really simple to do with svg where uh, you just define your path and have the text follow the path uh, we'll look at some more examples on what you can work with uh, svg text uh, in some time uh, animations so svg has these uh, presentation attributes uh, presentation attributes are more like fill a uh, stroke that css understands and we can use css animations to uh, uh, animate the svg for other attributes like path uh, which cannot be handled by css because it doesn't understand it we can use uh, svg animations now uh, we look at both uh, right here so how many of you have uh, played flappy bird here oh. so what i have here is my own pretty version of flappy bird uh, as you can see it flaps all is doing is flap it's not a game so uh, what i can do with this is uh, what i have here is an svg version and it's really simple to do this uh, as you can see i have the bird uh, the bird class where i've defined my paths uh, for the wing and uh, the rest of the bird what we can do is the right wing that you see here uh we'll animate that using uh, css uh and this is again really simple i'm using uh, the webkit transform or the normal transform as well and i'm translating the bird to move uh, up and down so it shows the flapping of the bird now that i have a flapping bird i would want to make it move around moving around a straight line is pretty simple but what if i want to make it move across a shape like this this would be really difficult to do but with svg this is a uh, really simple to accomplish all you have to do is you have to uh, define your path uh, which you can create using any of the desktop tools like inkscape or illustrator or you can use uh, online tools for this like svg edit or mondrian and once you have your path uh, what you have to do is use the animation motion tag and just say which path to follow provide an id and say okay follow this path this is how simple it is to do there is no javascript involved to do this at all it's really simple and one more thing that you can do is have uh, svg draw something like this with svg uh, path capabilities you can animate and make your uh, website much more richer and to do this again it's a uh, really simple you just have your path and use the animate uh, tag to animate it uh, we'll just look at a real world example of where this is being used so this is uh, a new york times article so new york times is uh, doing uh, have these multimedia stories where they are exploring all the new web technologies and uh, using them to improve their uh, user experience so this is one which uses uh, svg path so what what this article talks about is the journey from one place to another so let's see how you how it goes so it's from petersburg to moscow as the story progresses you can see that for every stop it kind of animates it like right here you can see that uh, every stop animates really well and it enhances your uh, user experience with this so this is what you can uh, do with svg and it's really simple to do and it improves the uh, user experience oh, css or svg again let's uh, take a look at example so how many of you seen the twitter fail wheel oh quite a few of you so there is an animated version of uh, twitter fail wheel that's available online uh, on the internet so this was created completely using html and css 
and what I've done is I've created my own version of Twitter fail whale with SVG completely in SVG and as you can see it is responsive and there is no loss of validity because SVG itself is scalable and here is the CSS version although this can be made responsive uh, it's very hard to draw something like a bird using uh, CSS and HTML. SVG has the shape attribute just to draw something like this. So this is where you would want to use SVG instead of uh, the CSS. Oh, it's pretty. <laughs> huh? Uh, it's, it's not bad. The performance is uh, not very bad. I've seen it. It, it has only like three transitions. So we can take a look at it. We'll, we'll look at it after uh, we're done with the demo. I mean, session. Uh, coming to interactions, uh, now that we can use uh, CSS, sorry, SVG right within your HTML document, uh, it works well with uh, CSS interactions as well. Uh, here I have a path, so as I hover on it, you can see that I'm changing the uh, fill color. Uh, how this is done is that I define my path, and uh, since we have our uh, presentation attributes, which is fill, which CSS understands, we can animate, uh, we can apply transitions on hover. Uh, all I'm doing is on hover, uh, change the fill color. So this is how simple it is to do this. And a uh, more real world example would be to create something like an image map. What I have here is a map and there are different locations of the map which on hover changes the uh, color. Uh, what I can do with this is as I hover on it, I can provide more information uh, about the particular location or take take the person to that location which would provide some more information about this uh, location and it's really uh, simple to do as well without any JavaScript again. Uh, here I have uh, the clip path and I'm using the image which is which I'm embedding within the uh, path. And again, on hover, I change the fill color. Okay, coming back to text, uh, this is one of the things that you can do with text right here. What I'm doing is I have a path and I'm making the text flow on the path. Uh, as you can see here, uh, it's moving around. Uh, how I can do this is again, define my path and get the text to follow the path using the animate attribute. So uh, let's look at some more uh, animations that you can create. This is available in SVG WOW. Uh, so this will run through all the effects that you can do for text. So it's like a 40 seconds video that shows all the, sorry. HTML. So these are the capabilities that uh, SVG provides, and so as you can see, it, it you can create really rich animations with uh, text and SVG. So uh, coming to more richer interactions. So we saw the bird that we had back then, uh, it, it was following a path. So what I'll do now is draw my own path that it should follow. So I create my path and ask the bird to follow the path that I uh, just created. Uh, so you can do a lot of drawing and interactions with using uh, SVG and there's another example uh, right here. Uh, where if you click on it, it adds an element and you can drag it along. Uh, this is completely done in SVG. So these are some of the things that you can do. But to do more complicated interactions, you would want to use a library like Raphael or Snap or D3, which would help 
uh, abstract all the complexity and make it simple for you to use it. So this is what you can do and coming to uh, browser support. This is a uh, support for inline SVG. Uh, as you can see, most of the current browsers and devices support it, uh, except for Opera Mini. In SVG itself is supported across all the browsers, but uh, this is the statistics for in uh, normal SVG. When SVG is not supported, you might want to use a modernizer or a simple PNG uh, to fall back on. And what should you not do with inline SVG is you shouldn't create your entire HTML application using uh, inline SVG because the performance of SV, I mean, your web page would slow down incre incredibly because you, can, you, should, you should use it in web components like a logo or a components of your website rather than the entire website. And you should also not use it when there is a lot of re-rendering of your assets uh, that is uh, required. In that case, we would want to use uh, something like Canvas. And uh, these are where I found all the things from. And let's look at another example. So this is completely done in uh, SVG again. So this shows the interaction where I click on it and it changes. I can animate it. So these are the things that you can do with SVG and imp to improve the user experience. And you can reach me right here at sp.lk slash hasgeek. And yeah, that's about it. Do you have any questions? Yeah. So uh, Canvas is what you use for uh, bitmaps where you need a lot more uh, like a gaming application, a complicated gaming application which need not be uh, responsive. But SVG is when you need more interactivity in your HTML uh, applications. Um, hello? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Hi. Uh, so I wanted to ask uh, why is it uh, it's suggested that you shouldn't use smell animation for SVG, SMIL. Uh, I mean, it's, it's better to use, uh, besides the fact that it's not supported in Internet yes. Explorer, uh -huh. I mean, is there any other reason why it's not? The perform, it's not, yeah, that's one of the reasons that you shouldn't be using because it's not supported across all the things. And the performance of uh, CSS animations or SVG animations is a lot better than uh, SMIL. So but smell animation, SML animation is SVG animation, right? I mean, that animate motion no, and stuff, uh, what you wish What showing. I mean to say is, you, you have to choose between uh, CSS and SVG when... So CSS animations are supported on browsers much more than... A lot of... Uh, how do I say this? So it, it, uh, SVG has a lot of geometrical operations that uh, it has to do to do any of the animations, like drawing a path involves a lot of uh, geometrical operations or mathematical operations that you have to do. But with CSS animations, if it's just a transition, it wouldn't have to look at any other path to follow. So that is that code is not really embedded inside your browser to do it. Actually, I'm not really asking between CSS animation and SVG animation. Okay. Because you can't do everything uh, you can do in SVG animation using Correct. CSS animation, Correct. right? I'm asking uh, with regards to smell animation mm -hmm. versus using something like uh, maybe uh, Snap SVG or Raphael. No, Snap again uses the same thing. But uh, I mean, instead of having the animation tags within SVG, uh huh. Uh, you know, so if you want to do a small component, uh, so if you want to animate a small, say I had a logo there. If you want to just animate that, you wouldn't want to get the entire library within your web page. If it's small things that you're looking for, then you can directly use uh, inline SVG capabilities and add it right there. But uh, uh, to do more complex things, that is when you would want to use a library as such. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does that answer your question? Uh, sort of. Oh, well, let's. Uh, yeah, uh, I can talk to you later. Yeah. Yeah. There's a question for you on screen. Oh. Uh, is there an SRC property for inline SVG? Uh, yes, the 
inline SVG, what does that mean with an image tag? Okay, whoever asked has to clarify that now. <laughs> uh, I, I suspect that if I have a PNG or, a, or some other form of format like that, I can use a data URL. <laughs> I'm putting that in my channel. I use it with uh, a oh, uh, oh, If you have an image tag and uh, you provide the B64, is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, so uh, another uh, binary format image, I would have to use base 64 mm -hmm. But since SVG is text anyway, mm -hmm. um, can, I, can I just put the text inside the SRC tag rather than, you know, linking to an external... Um, this Wait, or using base 64. I don't get the question. Oh, yeah, uh, I mean, like, can I use an SVG uh, document uh -huh. right inside uh, a place where a data URL is expected? For example, in the image SRC or maybe in like in inside CSS. So inside in background. image SRC, you use dot SVG, whichever the SVG file is. Oh, no, no, no. I, 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 yeah, uh, exactly. Correct. Uh -huh. But I do not want to link to an external SVG resource because that will cause the browser to, you oh, know, you make an error. you can embed the entire SVG within your, uh, inside, say, you, you, you want to put it within a dev tag, you can always do that. But unless you want more capabilities, like interact with it, then it would not, it's not really advisable because it just loads it, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, a slightly related question. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to use uh, a background image on, you know, uh, using CSS, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want to add a CSS background image. Mm -hmm. And again, I can use a data URL over there, a background image URL, whatever. Mm -hmm. So is there, is it possible to use SVG over there? Yeah, you uh, can just again get your SVG right there. I mean, you just provide your URL with the uh, SVG uh, file that you have. Um, yeah. Uh, Without using an external file, I mean embed it inside in, uh, in line. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yes, you can do that. I mean, you can always have SVG as. Uh, like, if you got an SVG uh, file in your folder, then how? Sorry. If you got an SVG file in your folder, then uh -huh. how do you put the URL for uh, like S SVG property in the SVG property? Like, yeah, uh, in iframe we have. Equal to, right? Correct. Like if it's SVG attribute, uh -huh. how do you, uh, which attribute is you can give for uh, like a... So I have an SVG so tag and what do you want to do with yeah, that? Yeah, SVG tag is there but I don't it? want to put the complete SVG nodes in the HTML file. I want to put, I want to use an external SVG. Okay. How do you do that in there? The other... Uh, like, uh, why we need, like yes, um, why I need is like because uh, I don't want to put the complete SVG pro tags Correct. inside the so HTML. You can use the image tag or iframe or then object. it will work exactly the same as inline inline SVG. No, it doesn't work like yeah. inline, inline so, SVG is something that is present right within your DOM. Yeah, so there is no option to put it like in. Then you just go to the SVG and get copy it right here. There are uh, libraries which actually do that. Once you uh, give the SVG, it uh, optimizes it, optimizes it, and uh, gives Be it. Because otherwise, if we that. want to use some inline SVG things, mm -hmm. I, I anyway I need to put it inside the browser HTML completely, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, um, if I want to put it in a separate SVG and then use as inline SVG, there's no option, right? That's what I. Ah uh, no. Couple more questions in the back. <laughs> Yes, you can do that. Uh, so within the dev, oh, can I just go? Okay. So there are there's a particular tra track called uh, devs where you can define all your paths and you can use the use tag. Okay, I'll just show. So uh, there is a tag called depths where uh, you can define your, okay, I don't have it here. So what you do is uh, you have the depths uh, tag where within which you can define all your uh, paths or attributes that you want to reuse and use the use tag again. It's again use tag which you can reuse it providing the link, uh, the ID. Sorry, I 
couldn't find that, but I have it right here. I can show you the examples later if you meet me offline. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? One, one more question. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Priyanka, one question. Uh, the fact that you can actually, uh, uh, you know, in an image tag, you can actually call a SVG file, mm -hmm. right? Uh, is it safe to assume that um, in terms of the um, uh, the way it renders, like SVG versus an image, is uh, is it safe to assume that it's just a different format, but the way it behaves is similar? Uh, for example, I mean, like an image is a rastered file uh, okay. type, and this is a, a scalable. So what happens is, uh, say, Internet Explorer, right? Uh. It doesn't understand what SVG is, sure. so it might not really render it. So you need to have a fallback for that. So yeah, I mean, uh, but no, uh, let's generally assume it that there is a fallback, yes. and you know, I know that there are some uh, you know products that give you a fallback in uh, in the form of a PNG or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I think this is also a follow-up question to uh, you know what someone asked, I, or rather, I just wanted to clarify: Can SVGs be uh, also used as background images? Yes, you can. Okay, you can and uh, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, the size of an SVG is how you had saved it originally. As in, uh, what is uh, so? For example, if I call an SVG file, uh, is that what is the default size of that? Because it's obviously uh, it's your external file, so it's really small compared to. No, no, I'm talking about the physical size. So, for example, uh, oh, the dimensions you yeah, can dimension. even you can always uh, change it right within your uh, okay. image tag. But so the default is how you saved it in your yes, application. Yes, yes. Okay, that's that was my question. Hmm. Okay, 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 cool. That's it. Yeah, thanks. Hello. So, uh, if I use the image tag mm -hmm. to include an SVG, uh, how much of the uh, DOM capabilities do I get or can I get? Mm, with image tag, uh, mostly what you can do is say add the whole effects that image tag allows, but not the SVG capabilities and the, you'll still get the responsiveness and the scalability, but what you won't get is uh, the SVG attributes and SVG uh, animations that if you want yeah, to Yeah, so the animations etc. Yes. So but what if, if you still want to have like a hover, uh, but if you want to change the color again that comes back to SVG, so you need to have inline SVG for that. But if you just want to say uh, add the filter effect on uh, hover, that you can easily do with. Uh, so what if I want to use an external SVG resource, I just use the SVG tag? along. Uh, if there is a SVG stored uh -huh. as an external resource Correct. and I want to load it, j which is like the effect is similar to inline SVG, what do I do? I use the SVG tag and it has yeah, some source get attribute. Yeah, you SVG tag right within your uh, DOM. No, what if it's an external resource, the SVG file that I want to load? Uh, then you should, you need to put it within the image tag. But you need to copy and paste it right here. You can, there is no way to just load it as. I mean, there are libraries that do that, but so, there is no uh, direct. So essentially, I use the image tag to load it. And then I uh, load some external library which enables yes, the DOM that. elements huh. with the abilities. There, there okay. is SVG, I don't know, I forgot, I'll get back to you, but sure. yeah, there are libraries that uh, do that. It expands, optimizes, and puts it right into your DOM. Snap does that here. Yeah. Sorry? Okay. Is it good? Oh yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's by the creator of Raphael uh, only, so it's really good. It's the it's basically Raphael 2.0, but with a lot more capabilities than uh, Raphael. We were using Snap and we were building the tool, so.